Testing one, two, three, four. Okay, I think my microphone is working. <laughs> uh, is anybody here? Oh, we got five viewers. Hey, Mark Gillette from Orlando is here. Yay, I got my first watcher for today. <laughs> uh, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Um, this is Roxim Live. Um, I am looking. For, I, I have, we're doing new technology today. We got my computer in the past, this one right here was the run one computer that was running everything. It was running the video streaming, it was running Roxam, it was running the launch visualizer. And it had so much going on that um, there was this lag in the stream when I was talking and when my lips would move. And it was kind of weird. So this time we have a new computer that is completely just running the stream so hopefully it processes the stream and the video quality better that my mouth and my voice actually line up better. So let's hope that's working. Uh, we have Nick Verini from Colorado and Sebastian from NYU. Cool. I don't think, uh, Sebastian, have you been here before? Um, so I am also looking here at the monitor because that's where the, uh, the chat comes in. Um, so this is Roxim Live, as I was saying. What we do here is we talk about Roxim and how to use it and how to get the most out of it. And we also talk about rockets in general. You know, how do you design a rocket and rocket science? Um, so I am totally open to discussing what you want to talk about. Um, if you have a question about Roxim, go ahead and type it into the chat. Um, if this is your first time here at uh, Apogee on the YouTube channel, um, our website is apogeerockets.com and Roxim can be found on our website. If you go to shopping, you can buy it right here under um, software and if you just want to figure out what it does and learn a little bit more about it um, go to how to and guides on the menu bar and then go down to software and then this uh, panel right here shows you all about Roxim like um, what is Roxim that's a good place to start if you're totally brand new on what it does um, if you're trying to learn it then come to this side the how to information um, we have video tutorials, um, and we also have our Roxim Live training. These are the archives of the episodes that you're watching right now. There's a lot of good information there, so if you click on that, that will take you to our um, this Roxim Live training page, and you will see the different episodes, the link to the YouTube where the video is, and then the topics that we talked about in that episode, plus the timestamps. So you can just jump right to that specific topic if you're interested in it. Uh, we are on episode number 43 today. It is Friday, November 5, 2021. We are closing in on Christmas. Um, if, you, if you're watching this live or within a couple of days of it, um, you know, the mail has slowed down a little bit. Um, so if you want your rocket stuff in time for Christmas, now is the time to start ordering. Um, tell your loved ones and your friends and, you know, give them your wish list. Um, I believe if you go to my account, if you logged in, there is a wish list that you can start creating and then you can share that with other people so that they can see what's on your wish list. Wish list. Ah, so I got... Sebastian says this is his first time. That's so cool, Sebastian. We're so glad to have you here. Uh, I got no questions right now about Roxim. So um, tell me what you want to learn. You know what 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 you're interested in. Um, this this is totally uh, what you are interested in. You know I could I could just play, but um, you know I want to I want to be helpful to you and what you what you want to know. We have Rosa from Ottawa, Canada is in the house today. Cool. 
Ah, okay. Nothing going on. Um, our launch visualizer, which is on a, on a new website, um, it's the roxim.com website. If you go there, um, it's broken today. <laughs> Um, I can't run any simulations in the launch visualizer, so uh, which is too bad because I wanted to see it. We got this uh, brand new um, finger pointing thing here. My, we're still in beta testing. This is why it broke, because the programmers were working on it, and then they had a vacation, and while they were gone, it broke, and I can't fix it on my end. They have to fix it on their end. So I have to wait until they come back on Monday morning. Uh, but one of the last things that they did was um, on the launch visualizer to run a simulation, you got to push the launch button and people can't find the launch button. So we made this little animated icon right here that kind of points at the button, but it doesn't quite point at the button. So we either need to change the uh, hand arrow to kind of point downwards or move the button up. But the other problem is that um, this is a responsive website. So if you're watching it on your phone, um, you know, the things are going to change. So if I, if I make this smaller like this, this is how it would look if you were on your phone or a tablet. You know, it would be have a different look to it. Um, so, you know, up, see the, these button bars, they used to be on the side. Now they're on the top. Um, you can select a design. Um, I can load a design. It's just I just can't launch it because it just hangs. Um, so here's a pterodactyl. I can select that. And when I uh, upload it, what it does is it uh, loads that rocket and puts it here on the launch pad. And man, is that small? There we go. That's bigger. So there's the rocket sitting on the pad, and this is three dimensions, and you can see this blue arrow right there. Let's see if I can slide this screen over. There we go. That uh, blue arrow says wind direction, so the wind is coming out of the west in this particular simulation. So that's important stuff that you're going to want to know if you're going to be launching a rocket because you have to aim into the wind. Um, or you know, suffer the consequences of going in a direction you don't want to go. Uh, Carlos is here from Marietta, Georgia, and he says, there are many Mylar inflatable balloons. Imagine one where the igniter is on the burn-through string, trying, tying it to the pad. Can, can Roxen model this? A Mylar balloon no, <laughs> I can't figure out how you would model a balloon in Roxim. Um, Mark Gillette says, I volunteered to be a beta tester for the new launch visualizer by filling out the interest form on the Apogee website, but I haven't heard back. Um, Mark, was it yesterday? Because it was yesterday, I was going to answer you back. And then what I did was I went to the, web, the launch visualizer to make sure it was still working and it wasn't working. So I didn't want to set you up and not having it work because that would have been a nightmare. Um, so uh, just stay tuned, uh, Mark. And if you don't hear from me by like Tuesday, Monday afternoon, ping me again. And if you, you know, um, and then I'll set you up with credentials so you can, well, you, anybody can log in. Um, let me make this bigger. Um, the one thing, if you're not logged in, there's, you're, there's certain features you don't have. Um, let me log out um, and I'll show you. Okay, so if you're not logged in, this is what it will look like. And um, you, you want to sign in or create a new account. But if you don't have a new account and if you go to the main page, that's here. This is the launch visualizer. Um, you can choose a design. Uh, but you can't pick from user designs. You can only pick what's available in the list. Um, and I think the list now currently, if you're brand new, it has seven designs. Um, and that's the most we can give because every user that comes to and creates an account 
we store that information in the cloud for that user. So it's tied to that specific user. So if you make simulations on those designs and you run those simulations, all that data is your data. And we needed to keep it separate from, you know, a user over here, you know, if they run the simulation with that design. So we have to partition those designs into everybody's folder. But the users, once you log in, you can create and store user designs. So these are your personal things that you might have uploaded, um, created Roxum designs and uploaded them, or found Roxum designs on the internet somewhere. There's thousands of Roxum designs on the internet. So you can find one, upload it to the visualizer, and that will get stored in your user's designs. Um, and then also, when you go to the launch site, um, if you're not a premium member, you can only launch in one location in the planet, and that's my home launch field in Pueblo, Colorado. <laughs> um, we, we want you to, you know, to subscribe to the service and so you can launch anywhere in the world. You know, there's this interactive 3D globe right here that once you log in, I can, I can launch anywhere in the world. Nothing is off limits. I can launch from, you know, the back yard of the White House. Um, I, not that I'm going to launch from the backyard of the White House, but in the launch visualizer, you can. Um, and you can also, um, you know, everything that's locked, you can't change unless you subscribe to it. And during the, so, so my point is, um, once you're a beta tester and you give me feedback, I will unlock all these locks for you. Um, so you can choose your own launch site and you can choose, you know, how you're going to launch the rocket. Um, the other thing is um, y when you are um, on the free user account, you, when you choose an engine, you're limited to up to a D motor. Um, so you can't go bigger than a D. So if you want to go bigger than a D, then you need to subscribe. Um, again, you know, we... We, we want you to subscribe. Um, it's, I think you're going to have a lot of fun if you do. So, um, so once you log in, and I can log in into my account uh, here, sign in. Um, so now, you know, I can, I can pick a launch site and see and it's loading the map. And this is our launch site here in Pueblo, Colorado. But if I zoom out, let me switch north to pointing up. Um, and then zoom out and you can see that this is the globe of the world, you know, and if I wanted to launch, you know, like, let's find the St. Louis Arch here in uh, Missouri. So that's got to be somewhere here near St. Louis. Okay. Zooming in. I know it's uh, right close to the Mississippi River, and this would be the Mississippi River here. Uh, what are they calling it? The Jefferson National Exposium, Exposition Memorial. This is the Golden. This is the Arch, the St. Louis Arch, and you can see the shadow of the Arch on the ground because we're looking at a bird's eye view of it. So if I wanted to launch right there from the bottom of the Arch, put my launch site right there. Confirm that launch site, and it gives me the latitude and the longitude, and then I can launch from, from that location. Like I said, nothing's off limits. Um, so, no questions still, but we're getting a lot more users in. we got uh, Clint Browning from North Carolina, Mark Sell from Parker, Colorado. Um, Nick says Google. Hmm. I don't know what Google means. Well, I know what Google is, but I don't know if that is that a question, Nick. Um, Alan White's uh, hi from Seabrook, down the road from NASA in Houston. Cool. And then we have somebody that looks like I can't pronounce their name, and he says hello. <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me a question so I can talk about, you know, what you wanna, want to want to hear. Uh, other than the Mylar balloons, because I, I still don't know how to do Mylar balloons, Carlos. Every, every week, Carlos comes up with a really tough question. I think last week, we talked about um, piston launchers and 
having drag change on your rocket, the drag going down. Um, I can't make drag go up, but I can make drag go down. So if you want to see that episode, again, come to uh, the Roxim Live training. And um, I think it was simulating short, short duration weights in Roxim where we talked about that. It was a, that was an interesting topic. Uh, okay, here we got a first question from Ark Bolter. Can Roxim model a rocket that separates into two pieces, two separate parts at Apogee, each with its own parachute? I'm trying to think. Um, the answer is yes. Um, but in Roxim, um, it's not it's not that exciting. Um, you gotta set, you gotta set it up as a two stage rocket. Um, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to do it in Roxim Pro. Uh, because then you can actually see it. Because in Roxanne Pro, you can see the parts coming down. Okay, so here is a rocket. Um, let me, I have an example on how to do this. Um, if you go to How To and Guides, and you go down to Software, and you come over to Roxanne Video Tutorials, and you come here to the Tark tutorials using Roxim because this is where the Tark competition, which is the American Rocketry Challenge, um, in the past, I don't know if they require it this year or not, um, where you have to have the egg come down separate from the body. Um, the contest now has been going on like almost 20 years and they, they switch up the rules every time. And some years they require it to come down as one piece, sometimes they require it to come down in two pieces. So I created this TARC tutorial number three right here, setting up a simulation where the nose cone returns separate from the fin portion. Um, that is the Roxim version. And I'm gonna try to do the Roxim Pro version and it might be a little different. Um, so here I am in Roxim Pro, and I can tell that by looking at the top. Uh, first, I want to open up a design that you might want to do this in, and one of the designs is like an egg lofter rocket. Um, um, let me go to Roxim Designs. I'm looking for a rocket called an egg tosser. I'm going down to the E's egg tosser. Open that. And I'm not going to save that design. So this is an egg tosser rocket. Um, and it is an egg lofting rocket. So in the front we have an egg. And right now it's set up with just one parachute in it. If I look at it in 3D, this is kind of what it looks like right there. And I can rotate it around and look at it from any angle just by clicking and dragging with my mouse. Okay, I'm going to go back to 2D right up here. Um, so first, let's put in a second parachute. Um, the way this worked in Roxim was you had to set it up as a two-stage rocket. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing here. So I want the bottom stage as one stage and then the, the egg capsule as another. So I'm going to go to the Rocket Design Attributes tab, and then the number of stages will set that up as a two-stage rocket. Okay, so nothing's changed so far, but if I go to the Rocket Design Components tab, um, you can see I got a booster stage right here. Now, I want everything from the body tube down to the booster to be in the bottom stage. So I'm going to do a copy on this. So I'm going to do edit, copy, or cut. 
You say, really delete? And I say, yes. So we deleted everything below that thing. And then I'm going to go to the booster and then do a paste. Okay, so um, the reason it's not showing here right now is because I'm only showing the first stage. So if I click on two stage, now I can see the entire rocket. Um, and it shows <laughs> when I went... I, was, did, I don't know if you noticed this, but the center of pressure on a single stage was way out here. So our nose cone is unstable, uh, which we kind of expect it would be. Um, good to know, though. Okay, so we have a two-stage rocket. So now we need to put in a parachute in the upper stage. So that is the front egg capsule. I can either put it in that portion or this portion. Um, I already got an egg and padding. Um, and right now, it is not allowing me to put a parachute into that part because the parachute button right here is grayed out. Um, I forgot. One of the things I forgot to do is make my mouse bigger so that you can see it because I'm, I'm zipping it around on the screen here. Oops. Close the wrong thing. System preferences, accessibility, display, cursor, large cursor. Okay, so now you can see where my mouse is. Uh, just like check up over here on the chats. Um, Fat Bank is from Cata, Texas. Jim M from Columbia, South Carolina is here. Hello, Jim. Um, Fat Bank says, I'm experiencing more crashes in Roxim. Are crashes less common in our Roxim Pro? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, they're, they're the same program. The way we make the programs is, it's the same source code, and then it, and it, it branches off. So you have the one branch goes to Roxim, one grant branch goes to Roxim Pro. Um, so they should be pretty similar. Um, and um, we've noticed crashes when you're trying to open a new design. Um, so like if I, on this design here that I have on the screen, if I go to File Open, sometimes it will crash there which is a good thing to do is to save your design every now and then. So I'm going to call this egg tosser two stage. No, it's not two stage, two parts. And I'm going to put it on my desktop just so I know where it is. Okay, so I saved it. This year is one piece for Turk, says Wonder Bucket, and that's Michelle. Michelle works here at the office, and she is monitoring the chat. Um, uh, Mark Sell says, I'm also having crashes, and it, Roxim was pretty stable until Windows or, or Microsoft and Apple started playing around. Whenever they do an update, you know, like a security update, those things always seem to affect other programs, and Roxim seems to be susceptible to whatever monkeying around that those guys are doing. Um, so that's really all I can guess at right now. Um, we we need to diagnose that more, and it's just we're, we're going to get to it as quickly as we can. Okay, so going back to my design, um, I've got the, I can't put a parachute there, and I'm pretty sure I can't put a parachute in the nose cone, so I need a tube in this nose cone somewhere. So I'm going to add a tube which is, you know, like normally right here, there's a shoulder on the nose cone. And I think that shoulder, um, let me see, that shoulder, here it is right here. It's in the uh, booster stage. I'm going to delete it out of there. So I just did a right click on the part and then hit delete. And I'll just make that go away. Because I want to put that shoulder up here. And I'm going to put it in um, as a tube. 
um, as a body tube or an inside tube. And if I try to do an inside tube, it's going to put the tube right here, you know, in the middle of the nose cone. Um, but if I do it as a body tube, it should attach it to the base of the nose cone. Um, but it's going to treat it like it's an external part, which is okay because a short tube like this is not going to contribute much drag to the rocket. Um, and this is a 24 millimeter tube, but I actually want a coupler, a 24 millimeter coupler. So I'm going to grab the 24 millimeter tube and I'm going to tweak the, the dimensions just a little bit. So it added a tube there and I'm going to make the, the length, let me make this window bigger. Don't want to go underneath my face over there. Um, I'm going to change the length. I'm going to make it an inch long. And this tube is where I'm going to put my parachute. So that's 1.0 inches. Okay, now I said I was going to adjust the, uh, the diameters. So um, the inside diameter is 0 0.950, so that should be the outside diameter, or just a little bit smaller. Um, and then the inside diameter will be uh, smaller than that. So first I'm going to make this 1.950 and then make this one, I'll make it in like 920. So it's like a 15 thousandths wall. Okay, so there's my shoulder, my nose cone. I'm going to call it nose cone shoulder. So we know what it is because it, it's showing it as a an outside tube rather than an inside tube. Um, if you look over here on the parts, um, the, the, the symbol, the icon for an outside tube looks like that and an inside tube looks like that. So you can see that our body tube here looks just like that when it's treating it as an outside tube, but we're kind of faking it. Um, the other thing that I'm going to need to do is to make this an engine mount because the two-stage rocket, you need an engine mount. So um, it's an engine mount and we're not going to put a, a motor in there right now, but it's, it's looking for an 18 millimeter diameter motor. The material is paper, so that's okay. Okay, so now we have a nose cone shoulder and I can put in a parachute into this nose cone. And I'll just put in a small... I don't know, 15 inch nylon parachute. This is one of the Apogee parachutes, which are really nice. You can see where it's located right here. Um, it's probably not in the spot where we normally put it, but I can actually move it. Um, so I just changed it to two stage again. Uh, here's the location from the front of the owning part. The owning part is the shoulder. And I am going to I noticed something here. Um, my shoulder is not inside my other tube because I made it an outside tube. Um, I got a way to trick that. Um, I got a way to trick that. So let's go. So right now I got a parachute in there. Um, so I'm going to take this nose cone shoulder and I'm going to make the length a lot shorter, 0 0.001 inches. So now, I don't, uh, let me change the color to red so you can see it. Okay, so here is my shoulder. <laughs> it's an outside tube, so, you know, it's kind of like just putting a very fine sliver of tube right at the base of the nose cone. You know, for all intents and purposes, it's not really there. Um, but it still allows us to put a parachute in it because our parachute is still there. Uh, but now we lost our shoulders, but now I can put in that um, shoulder. Oops, cancel out. Um, I want to put in the shoulder. So now I can use an inside tube. Um, and this is going to be a 24 millimeter. Actually, um, actually, let me cancel that. Cancel that. I can use a coupler as a shoulder. Here's the coupler. Because then I can go into the database and find a tube coupler. So I'm looking for a 24 millimeter coupler. Uh, 
Uh, where's my AC24? Hmm. See, uh, I can just 0.92. Okay, so we'll make this 0 0.87. No, uh, eight nine, and then make this length one inch. Oh, <laughs> point eight seven length one inch. I was, I was looking at the drawing and say, why is that coupler not making making it long? So there's the coupler, which is the shoulder. And look here, you got to specify a material. If I don't specify a material, this is going to give me an error. Um, so we'll make this out of paper. Click OK. OK, so now we have our two parachutes. This other parachute right here, let's make sure we can tell it apart. So we're going to call this the 15 inch um, hex parachute. And let's change the color, 2D color. Let's make it purple, 3D color, make it purple, so we can tell them apart. So we, now we have our two parachutes. And so now the location of that parachute, I can change the location here. Come on, why aren't you letting me grab you? Uh, let's call it three inches. So you can type in a number there and see it put it right there. So that's a little bit too far back, so let's we get two inches. Uh, still are far back, 1.4. Okay, so I like the location of that parachute. Now this other parachute, I would probably move that one further back too. Okay, so we have a two-stage rocket with a parachute in both stages. So far, so good. I'm going to save it. Now, uh, let's see if we can set up the simulation to trick it. So let's load engines in here. So this is our nose cone, and this is the bottom stage. So the engine mount here, we're gonna choose an engine. Let's like choose um, an Estes C6, mm, five. No, C63, it's got an egg in it. Okay, so I put an engine there. Now it's gonna want an engine up here. Um, let's see if we can run the simulation. I'm, I'm kind of doing this on the fly, so I don't know if this is going to work or not. We're going to see if, how, what we have to do to trick it. This is what you do to learn. You just play. Um, okay, so flight events. I have staging. Um, okay, it's going to stage at three seconds because that's the delay I picked. Um, the Parachute in the booster stage will deploy at time relative to stage separation. Uh, let's make that zero seconds. And then this parachute in the upper stage. Okay, now this maximum ejection delay, it's looking there's, there's no motor in the upper stage. So the max ejection delay, which would be this right here, controls when this parachute comes out. But let's see if we can choose a different thing. Let's say let's deploy it at Apogee and click OK. All right, so I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it. So the starting state of this rocket is on a 36-inch launch rod. We'll kind of launch it straight up, like 3.375 degrees from vertical, and the azimuth angle is 25.375. So azimuth is a compass direction. So north is zero, east is 90. So this is kind of north, northeast. So that's where it's pointed right now. Um, launch conditions. Um, this is our launch site. Um, this is in near Durango, Colorado. I was just playing with this a little bit earlier, just finding a nice pretty launch site. Uh, and our wind, we have an eight mile an hour wind. 
coming from the 270 direction. So 270 is from the west, from the west towards the east at eight miles an hour. Okay, so now let's launch it. So I'm hitting the flight profile button and see what it does. And it crashed. It says no data found, <laughs> which is typical the first time you run a two-stage rocket. I don't like that. That's the spinny ball of death. So let's cancel out of that. Let's run it again. So this time I'm, I'm not going to just run it. Okay, so this time it did not like this flight at all. Uh, it's going to an altitude of 0 0.53 feet. So something is wrong. Something is something is wrong. Um, Go to the engine setup. So flight events. Okay, so this let's change this parachute to never deploy. And see if that changes things. Launch. Nope. <laughs> that didn't do it. Ah. Okay, so now I'm interested. This is where it gets interesting. This is where the fun happens. Is where you're trying to figure out um, how to make it work. So what happened there was um, the first time it showed it crashed. The second time it says it didn't even leave the pad. And the only thing that I changed there was um, I took, I, mean, I set the parachute to never deploy. So let's go back and let's put an engine up in this nose cone. So let's choose an engine and I'll just choose a Quest you know, an Estes half A. So this is a small motor. Let's make it a two second delay. And click, engine overhang, 0.5 inches. Yeah, let's make it zero. Okay, so now we have an engine in the top. Well, let's click OK and I'll just show you. So I got a rocket engine in the nose. And I got a rocket engine down here. So this is the two, this is the booster stage. This is the sustainer. Let's go back to there. Okay, so now the flight event. So staging, um, let's say it stages at, uh, let's change this ejection here to a zero in the booster stage. So a zero second delay there. So now under flight events, I can stage at zero seconds. And the parachute, Time. Let's let's pop it out three seconds after separation, and the upper stage. Let's deploy it at maximum ejection delay. So imagine, you know, I got a rocket. I got a C six three in the bottom, and a half A six dash two in the top. Um, but. This motor is, I actually set it to a C60, so it's going to stage right away, and then it's going to ignite this one, and then this one's going to take off. And remember, we expect the nose cone to be unstable. Um, so it should tumble if everything is right. And let's long flight profile. Let's see if it works this time. Nope, it still crashed. But at least it's showing a rocket. <laughs> only seeing the upper part of the rocket not the lower stage see I think I know what's going on now it's it's not seeing that lower stage why is it not seeing the lower stage so that what was going on with these other simulations up here let's try it again no <laughs> let's save this um, this is just a two-stage rocket, so let's open up a different two-stage rocket and see if other two-stage rockets work. So here's an aerodactyl. Click open. So here's a two-stage rocket, and I'm going to load both, both of those load motors in. So what I did there was I right-clicked on, on the simulation, and I just clicked load motors, load engines, and it loaded them really fast. Um, so there's the two motors. Um, staging is going to happen at zero seconds. The parachute um, will come out at eight seconds. 
And let's click Flight Profile and see if this one works. No, it didn't work. No data found for booster CSV file. So it's giving me the same error. It's not showing the booster stage. This is a conundrum. I know that two-stage rockets work. Um, okay, so I'm going to try something else. So I'm going to go to uh, one of the things you can try is um, to reset the software back to factory conditions, and that's under the preferences. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the preferences and then go to the miscellaneous tab over here and you can see this button called factory reset when i click on that it's going to close roxim um, and then it's going to restart it and it's going to zero out all the user preferences and one of those user preferences is where data is stored and i think what might be happening is that it doesn't know where that booster data is being stored and it, it's kind of lost so hopefully by doing the factory reset, um, I can get it back. So um, let's open. Um, let's see, Apogee components. Um, it's not the uh, not the one that we were doing. Uh, I'm looking for a two-stage rocket. Two-stage rocket, Skymetra. Okay, here's a two-stage rocket. Okay, I want to load the motors really fast again, so I'm going to go load engines. So I'm loading a C60 and a B66. And let's see what this is set up as. Okay, flight events. Okay, staging is going to occur at maximum ejection delay. Parachute is also maximum ejection delay. Starting state, 36 inches, launch guide azimuth, and so now we're going straight north. Um, launch conditions, okay, so this is our standard site. I'm going to choose a launch site from the database. I'm going to choose uh, this site right here, click OK. Wind table, there's no wind right now, so I'm going to choose a wind table. Eight miles an hour from the west there and now let's run a flight profile <sighs> same problem still not seeing it yeah let's try it again something's going on <laughs> uh, Michelle if you um, have any suggestions that I might be doing wrong sometimes just talking to somebody else because I know two-stage rockets work. Why it's not working? And this is a traditional two-stage rocket. We have our sustainer and our booster. Let me go to preferences again. Let me just say that. Um, Allow imports, database exports, allow data path, data path, uh, browse. Um, library, application support. This, I don't know where the, the dot dot is, where it's looking for the data. Uh, let's click OK. Let's launch it again. Still nothing. It's just, it's like it's not seeing the booster stage. Ah, I know I've been spending too much time on this and I didn't get to the question. 
Oh, let's do it in Roxim because I know it should work in Roxim. We were in Roxim Pro. Let's do it in Roxim. Um, cancel out of that. Escape from there. Let me make the screen so you can see it. Um, let's do file open from the desktop. Um, what do we call that? Egg tosser two parts. Click open. Okay, so remember this is our two stage rocket, and I can prove that by see here's the sustainer, here's the booster. We have a motor tube up here, we have a motor tube down here. Um, prepare for launch. Nose cone. Choose engine. I'm just trying to set it up like it was before in Roxim Pro. Uh, Estes, Estes, Estes. C6, zero. Click OK. Now let's make it a three second. Okay, so flight events. See, this time there's no staging event. Uh, the booster, deploy at stage separation. That's a parachute. And then the sustainer also deploy at maximum ejection delay. And the, the delay in that upper stage was two, let's make it uh, custom, in zero seconds. So, so it should, should stage at three seconds, and then the boost uh, upper stage ignites. And then hit flight profile. Let's launch it and see what happens. Okay, so this time I did get an altitude, <laughs> 362 feet. So this one is working. Um, so now let's go look at the, the 2D flight profile and see what it looks like in here. Okay, so here's the rocket taking off. It should have three seconds. It should stage. And now the two parts are coming down. Um, you can just see it. Let me pause it here. So here's the booster stage. Or no, here's the booster stage right there. It's really little tiny. Um, and then here is the egg capsule. Um, see, so they are coming down separate. You can see that egg is falling a lot faster than the uh, than the bottom stage because it probably has a big parachute in it. Um, let's cancel. Let's let's change up this simulation here. I didn't click on it. Let's change the starting state to make it, let's arc it over a little bit so we can see that them separate better. Okay, so. Okay, so you can see they're still together. And this is the nose cone that looks like the bottom and then here is the stage. We need to get some wind in there. So this is the fin section, this is our nose section. See, that's, that's the problem with the 2D flight profile, is that it doesn't look like what the rocket really looks like. Roxham Pro would show us, but I'm, I'm not sure why it's not seeing that booster stage. <sighs> Wonder Bucket says, not sure, I'll test. Uh, okay, so let me go back through the list and see if there's any other questions. Because um, I think this is how... I, I'm not... Uh, <laughs> see, normally we don't want to have a motor in the top stage. So let's pull that motor out. Clear that motor, clear, select it. So cleared the motor out of the top stage. Um, flight events, so the parachute, let's deploy at Apogee. 
Um, applied state separation, so that's good. Okay, um, simulation controls. Launch conditions. So I want to give it some win. Let's see it again. Okay, so what I did this time was I took the motor out of the upper stage and gave it some wind. So the rocket's taking off. It's kind of arcing into the wind a little bit. Okay, and it did deploy this part here that looks like a rocket. That's the, our nose cone. And it is coming down separate from the bottom part of the rocket, which looks like that. Um, this one must have a, a bigger parachute than this 15 inch, which is why it's taking a lot longer for it to come down. So that <laughs> that was a long-winded question or answer to a simple question that I should have done it in Roxim in the first place. Uh, Karen Ma says, when I set the air brakes, pretending parachute deploy it after ignition in the launch setup, but I don't think it actually deployed. Okay. Does deploy after ignition mean after the delay burn or after the liftoff? So after ignition should always mean after you push the button. So um, so let's let's go back to this design to answer Karen's question. So under flight events, um, this booster um, wants to deploy the parachute. Um, let's see. Okay, so the booster stage, you can't change it, deploy after stage separation, or we can deploy at altitude. Uh, but the sustainer one, we can say deploy after time after ignition. So let's do that. And let's make it a very short time, like um, one second. And I'm not sure if this is going to work in a two-stage rocket. Because it's deploying it one second after ignition, and there's no motor in this upper stage. This, uh, yeah, this, this is probably not a good example. Um, let me go back to that. Still flight profile, see if it looked any different. No, I can tell you it didn't do anything different because I'm just looking at the max altitude here. It's the same. Um, let me open up a different design. Uh, just a single stage rocket. Let's take this one. I don't know what it is. Sure, we'll save that. Okay, so this is something that looks like a Dur-Red Max. A super Dur-Red Max. It's got a 29 millimeter motor in it, and I can tell that by looking at the motor that was last here, and that's a 29 millimeter motor. I just know that from experience. Um, so let's go to setup, let's choose an engine. Let's choose something with a really long burn. So I don't want 19 seconds. Let's try something like here, an F20, 2.68 seconds. Yeah, sure. Okay, and then the ejection delay, seven seconds. Click OK. Um, parachute right now, we have two of them in there. This is set up for dual deployment. Um, so deploy after time after ignition of four seconds, streamer. And the parachute is deploying at Apogee. Um, let's change the streamer to deploy at maximum ejection delay. And then the parachute to deploy, this, this is set up as dual deployment. So let's set it at an altitude, I don't know, let's go 300 feet. So right now is just a simple dual deployment launch. And I just want to get a baseline of what it looks like. So the rocket takes off, it's going pretty straight. And then we should see a streamer pop out first. Okay, there's the streamer. And then we should get a parachute at 300 feet. So right now we're over 700 feet. So when we get down to 300 feet, it should change to a streamer. 
and there, I mean, straight change to a parachute, and it did. Okay, so that is our baseline. Okay, so that's what that looked like. Now let's change the flight event. So now the streamer, let's deploy it time after ignition, and let's make it um, two seconds. Um, so now remember our engine right here, this engine, it burns for 2.68 seconds. So um, almost to the end of the burnout, it should pop out its streamer. And that's what I'm expecting to see. So when I launch, nope, it didn't work <laughs> because it's still going the same amount of altitude. Uh, I'm just going to use this time slider here, just go through it really fast. So it's still deploying the, the streamer at Apogee. And that can't be right. Flight events deploy at the time after ignition. Deploy at time after, so that's what it should be doing. Um, no event. Deploy. If, let's see what if, if I do it this way. Nope, it's still the same because I could I could see that number come up right there. It happened so fast. Um, so this time the streamer is still going to deploy. It's still coming down. So it's kind of like that deploy after a time after ignition is not working. I'm just having all kinds of frustrations today. Um, let's save this design. And I'm going to go back to Roxim Pro and open it in Roxim Pro. Open. It was on the desktop. And Dread Rockets, the one that I just saved. Click open. Uh, no changes to that. Okay, and then that last simulation was right here. So I'm going to do load engines. Okay, so in this one, okay, so we have a parachute. Um, let's never deploy the parachute. And the streamer, let's deploy. See, now this one I don't have time after ignition, but I do have a time. So time greater than, let's call it one second. The starting state, 36 inch launch rod, straight up, flight profile. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so I snuck a peak over here, and this time we got to an altitude of 686 feet. So here is the launch visualizer. Um, in Roxim Pro. This is not the web version because the web version is not working right now. <laughs> um, and it's only a 14 second flight. So the rocket takes off and there's the parachute. The parachute is out or the streamer is out. I don't know if you can see that. Let me pause that and back up a little bit. Okay, so if I zoom in here, come on, find the rocket, zoom in. See, the streamer is out, and the motor is still burning. So what's going on actually is um, the rock is still stable with the parachute. The streamer out while, while the motor is thrusting. Um, but then... There's Apogee and it just falls straight down. What's our peak altitude here? This one peak altitude is 686 feet. Um, and previously, um, let me run that same simulation with the streamer coming out at Apogee. Because we had the streamer coming out early, I think the streamer is affecting, which it should, affecting the flight. So the streamer, let's deploy it at Apogee. 
and then do the same simulation. Okay, so this time it went to 1,400 feet. Um, so yeah, so that, that last one where the streamer came out early, it was slowing the rocket down. It kind of it kind of came out the side and was dragging behind the rocket as the rocket was going up. So that's why it only went to 686 feet. If the everything goes together right, it should go to 1,400 feet. Um, so let me zoom out and let's see what this one looks like. So the rocket goes straight up. Now it's coasting. It keeps coasting. You can see it's a lot longer descent time too. And then the streamer should be out at this point. So yes, you can see the streamer is out. So everything did work just, just fine on that flight. And this is a full three-dimensional environment in Roxim Pro. Um, yeah. Um, another question you might have is, why did this one go 1,400 feet where this one only went 1,286 feet? And the answer is it's at different launch sites. This site here is Durango, Colorado, which is up in the mountains. And this one was at 700 feet above sea level somewhere. I'm not, it doesn't, I don't have a latitude and longitude, but it's 700 feet above sea level. Um, so that altitude difference is gonna make um, a difference in the altitude that the rocket goes to. Uh, Alan. Alan's question. I'm not sure what Alan's question was. Uh, can you do one here just so I can see? Okay, Karen, I, I think in Roxim it not, it's not working, but in Roxim Pro it is. And I'm sorry that it's not working in Roxim. I, we, that's a bug, because it should be working. I mean, if it deploys, if it deploys after ignition, that should be as soon as you, as soon as the motor starts burning. Uh, so something's going on that we need to fig figure out. Um, Michelle, you were answering my question, or did it get skipped? Um, so Alan's question. See if I can go back and find out, Alan. Can I create multiple different size motor adapters and have a way to select? or deselect, or do I have to create different files from each with its own motor adapter? Um, okay, so the quick way, Alan, on that one, if, if you want a, just a quick and dirty, um, I'm just thinking of another way to do it. There, there's, there's multiple ways to do it, but the quickest way is just throw in a motor that's smaller and then add a mass object to account for the weight of the motor adapter. The motor adapter, um, since it's not an outside part, it doesn't affect, affect the, the drag on the rocket or the center of pressure location. And it's only gonna affect the mass. So if you just throw in a mass object, um, that's very similar to a motor adapter. So this right here is, a, like I said before, is a 29 millimeter motor. And if I go to the Apogee website and if I look for a 24 millimeter adapter. Okay, so here's an Aeropac 24 millimeter adapter. And I just look at the weight, 7.6 grams for the motor adapter. So if I come here to the rocket and I wanna put in a, a 24 millimeter motor so what I would do is I would choose an engine. And right now it's only showing the 29 millimeter motors, but I can change that just by going to the diameter filter and say, show all the motors or smaller. So now it's showing the 24 millimeter motors as well. So I can take a 24 millimeter motor here, um, select the delay, click okay. And see, it loaded it in there, but I wanted to show you here on this, on this image. You can see um, 
this tube right here is the motor mount and the motor is smaller so we need an adapter there um, and to account for that adapter quick and dirty um, like I said you could just throw in a mass object into that into the rocket um, so here's the body tube and I'm just going to click in a mass object and I'm cancel out of the database and I'm going to say adapter mass and I can say um, was it 7.6 grams and this is like a really small screen here and you're not seeing it so here is the mass right now and I need to move that motor adapter mass here to the back so I'm just going to take it and just drag it with the slider just to kind of where I think it would be that's a good rough estimate click OK and now I'm set up for a launch so now it's just you know I can go ahead and launch it and it's flying it with that E18-8 goes to 931 feet that's interesting it shows the parachute coming out on the way up why would the parachute come out going up when it's a smaller motor than the F20 okay the motor burned out it's still coasting okay so there I'm at 7.24 seconds ah come on I lost my rocket what I do is I, I, I change it to the trajectory view and then center it find the rocket this always puts the rocket dead center in the middle of the screen and then you just use the plus here to find it so there's the rocket and there's the parachute coming out at Apogee did I have it set to come out at Apogee uh, I should have seen a streamer not a parachute Never deploy the streamer. Let's do it again. <laughs> didn't leave the pad. I can tell it didn't leave the pad by looking at this symbol right over here. Man, today's last week was uh, such a great week. This week I'm just having frustrations, just trying to figure things out. Oh man. See it zero seconds. So something's going on. What's going on? <laughs> what is going on I have the streamer set as never deploy and the parachute has maximum ejection delay and I have an eight second ejection delay right here let's make it a four parachute max ejection delay streamer never deploy launch oh, see that time it worked <laughs> 921 feet I don't know what happened to this one that's a strange one oh okay so but that was the answer to your question on, on a motor adapter is just throwing a mass object um, right where it would go and that would run quick and dirty simulations and then if you wanted to just um, you know if you had a 54 millimeter rocket and you wanted a 38 and a 29 millimeter adapter in there you could just change that mass um, that would be probably be the fastest way to do it um, the other way is you could create a sub-assembly um, for the motor adapter and just but then you would also have to have two different design files it's it's not an easy way to toggle back and forth because they're different parts ah. Ah. Karima says, so I guess I need Roxon Pro to do the air brake simulation. No, I'm sorry, Karen. It's okay. Hope that can be done in the next Roxim update, though. Um, yeah, I do too, but I don't know when that next update is going to be. It's going to be a little bit because we got we got a plate full with other things right now. Um, Alan White says, gotcha. And that was my concern. 
was the weight in the CG. I have been building them from scratch in Roxim, but hey, it was good practice. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is good practice. Um, so. <laughs> uh, I am out of time. We went 10 minutes long, and I, I feel like I didn't show anything because we, we ran into some problems. Why I couldn't run a two-stage rocket in Roxim Pro when I know it works. Um, I have to figure that out. Um, I may need to get some help uh, from the programmer on that. Um, we will be back again next. No. I am going to be gone next week, and Michelle is going to be gone next week. Um, so I don't have a host for Roxim Live next week, which is the, uh, what day would be next Friday? I'm bringing up a calendar, the 12th. Um, I will see if somebody else can do it. If not, um, well, we might have to skip a week, which I hate doing because um, because I want, I just want to do it. I want to do it every week and say I did it every week. Um, if we have to skip a week, that's just depressing. <laughs> uh, but normally we are every Friday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time, which is 4 p.m. on the East Coast. And yeah, this is Roxim Live, and we're done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm just so frustrated. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cancel the stream. In five, four, three, two, one, go out and launch something.